So this is a little bit different. Um, I am currently in Cleveland, which apparently is actually called the city of Cleveland. And um, normally when I'm traveling for work, I stay in a hotel that's in the casino where I work, but I am in an Airbnb with three other people. Uh, it's a little different. Anyway, when I found out I was coming to Cleveland, of course I immediately did some research to see about thrift shops and the bins. Well, there was no bins and no thrift shopping near this house. And as usual, I don't have a car. So I figured, oh, I guess I'll only be doing some sourcing online auctions. And then about a week or so before I was leaving, I found out that they were opening a brand new bins location the day before I get here. And I thought that was what serendipity. Um, and I had to go. So uh, it's still not that close, but I just took a, an Uber and I checked it out. I don't want to call this a review exactly because like I watch um, reseller videos who go to our bins, you know, when they're in town just visiting and they'll review, you know, they'll be like, I was there an hour and then they do this whole review like they know something. Like you cannot judge a bins in an hour. Um, and like any thrift store, you can go to a thrift store one day and find zero and then go back the next time and have a full cart. Um, but I think our bins are actually pretty good and we're spoiled um, because they are constantly changing out half the room at a time um, and, and the room and it's, it's big. So you always have, you know, plenty to look at. There's not a lot of waiting around time. Um, and the other beauty of doing half the room at a time instead of just one small section is it divides up all the shoppers. Um, like they're not all going to the one area that's new, you know, like the side of the room that has shoes, when they change that side out and we all go, shoe people go to shoes, hard good people go to hard goods, etc. cetera. Um, whereas before when they would just change one row or just one section like the shoes, then everybody in the room would go there because they were done with the rest of the stuff. Um, so here they change out every 30 minutes, like by the clock. Um, ours is just like however long it takes. Change half the room, go to the next half. Change half the room, go to the next. Um, and they'll announce it. Uh, something about, uh, what did, how did they call it? I don't know. Um, but they say stay away until, you know, the employees have, have gone away. It was very clean. It was brand new. Um, everybody was very nice. It's $1.79 a pound. If you get 25 pounds, it's $1.69 a pound. Um, so I was there three hours and I didn't find a lot. So, I mean, I found a few things that I was tempted by that would have issues. Like I, there was a spider jacket, a Timberland jacket, both of those I would have liked to pick up. Um, but the zippers were, the spider was missing the pull and the Timberland was missing it was missing the entire slider. The Timberland was missing the part hanging from the slider, which I normally wouldn't stop me from buying it, but I also could get the zipper up, but couldn't seem to get it down. So there were issues. And what I got is not like amazing. I have one piece I'm pretty happy with, but let's, let's see what I got. Okay. 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 Uh, this is the brand. I don't know. SL fashions, women's sizes made in USA size 22W, so vintage and plus size. I thought that was, I'm sitting on the floor, so it's not maybe the best position, but everybody else is still asleep. So I'm trying to be quiet in my room. All right, it's got this like gold scrolling on it on the front. It's got a few spots, but they seem very superficial. Like I can scrape them off, so I'm not concerned about that. It has these shoulder pads. I mean, it's not like I'm mad about this dress and had I found a lot of good things, this probably would not have made the cut. I brought only one suitcase, but I brought a duffel bag, but it turns out that I bought something, so I don't need the duffel bag. Gold buttons all the way down, all the way down. If you know the period of this, please share, because I've mentioned it before, I'm really bad with that sort of thing. And then it's got that little like belty thing in the back to give your waist a little shape. And I would say it's midi length. Could hit the ankles. I'm not sure and I'm not getting up. 
excuse me. All right, next, also vintage. Actually, all, all of this may be vintage. This is Casual Corner, size 10. Casual Corner was, you know, a mall store. Very popular in its day. It's this it, it kind of icky but delicious brownish plaid with rust tones. It's a boxy blazer with flap pockets, size 10, did I say that? And it is a, oh, 52% linen, 48% rayon. I, don't, I would wear this. It would be cute, I think, with jeans. Uh, okay, I bought this coat. I hemmed and hawed on this. Um, actually, there were a couple of other things I hemmed on. There was a men's coat I almost bought. Um, it was Pierre Balmain, and the comps for some of Pierre Balmain was really good, or were really good, and some not so good. Um, and there was no fabric tag, so I ended up leaving it because it was bulky. Um, so this is size 12, and the brand is Preston and New York. I found a couple of Preston and New York things, and initially I just went right by because it just seemed, I don't, like I recognized the name. Um, I didn't feel like it was a good name, but I can't say I've ever really researched it. But this one I just really like. Size 12. It's got this nice lining. And it is a beautiful teal color. Just a nice winter coat. Very basic. The back has, the stitching in the back I thought is really nice. It gives it a more, you know, I don't know, fun look. It's got this stitching here. And then I don't know how to describe that, but it's nice and it appears to be in perfect condition. There were no holes, nothing. Um, let me see if there's a tag that gives me, it's called Bottle Green and it is 80% wool and 20% nylon. So really nice. I'm pretty sure this is vintage. I don't know why, I just feel it. This tag here is sort of papery, for one thing. And then it's, uh, where was it made? It doesn't even say where it was made. And it, you know, oh, it's made in uh, Guatemala. Do we know anything about things made in Guatemala like that? Is, is that an indication of things or do, do they still make things in Guatemala? Don't really know. And the last item, is it the last item of the clothing? I think, think it is. Um, I didn't look this up. I bought it. Well, you'll see. It's a robe. Where's the label? It's Amanda Stewart Intimates. 100% cotton, made in Turkey. A white terry robe with cats on it. And they had the belt. Look, cats. Now and forever. So quite a few cats, as a matter of fact. Um, so it's nice that the robe, was, that the belt was still there. That's often not the case at our bins. And their shoes, by the way, the shoes, they never changed out the shoes while I was there, which is a blessing and a curse because shoes take up a lot more room. Um, but I love my shoes. I did pick up one pair of of Birkenstocks, but ended up putting them back because they were just the rubber kind that I have listed that's getting no attention and they were kind of worn. And then there was a single Birkenstock that I didn't find the match for, but most of the shoes were, um, had elastic and were together. So it was like, that was the only sh single shoe I found in the whole thing. Um, but there were no good brands. Just that one, sorry, I'm trying to, I'm getting messages. Um, just that one Birkenstock, but otherwise everything was put together, but no, no good shoes. Uh, okay. And then I got, I got this bag, but I think I put something in the bag. So let me figure out where the inside of the bag is. Oh, there's two things in here. Oh, this is a surprise for me because I completely forgot about these. These are a pair of Columbia pants. They're size small, 32. Um, Yes, I'm hesitant about Columbia, but they are a ripstop um, cargo pant. 
and they are the convertible kind. So I'm gonna check, I didn't check comps on this because they're so small and I thought, oh, I like these. Maybe they'll fit me um, and I'll keep them. But I'm gonna see if they, you know, if I can get like 20, 25 for it, I would more likely sell it. But I think they'll still be big on me because they're 32 and I really, I like cargo pants, but I don't really need this. I don't need them to be convertible. And this I definitely bought for myself because first of all, I can't imagine that it's worth selling. Um, they're new with tag, muck luck, muck luck. I don't know how much they were. Not very much, but they're those like super soft inside sockies with rubber bottoms. That's say muck luck to wear around the house. Um, I actually still generally will put these in shoes because I have a hardwood, not, I have laminate floors and I, I don't clean them as often as I should, so they would just get filthy really quickly. But, yep, for me. Okay, so this was the best buy, and I was surprised when I walked over and looked inside. It is a black sort of briefcase, must be vintage, black leather, and it is, are you ready? It is, can you see? I don't know if you can see, but it's to me. I've found and listed to me three times, I think. Always sold well and always sold quickly. So very happy about this. And in fact, I think it has, the initials on it are RJM, which I don't think it matters that much, unless your initials are RJM and then that's really cool. I thought I saw a lock thing. Oh, there it is. So I I don't know if you can reach out to Tumi to find out what the combination is on this lock. Um, I'll try to set it to zero, zero, zero. Maybe, maybe it isn't, it was never set. I don't really know how to do that. No. Oh wait, you put it up here. I'm sure I'm not gonna be that lucky. So I don't know if I can write to me and go, hey, I have this to me. It was my father's or whatever. And I don't know the combination. Is there any way? No, I can't say that. I don't know, I'll see. I'll see how, otherwise it's just decorative, but very happy with this, very happy. And then finally, okay, so as I said, I did bring a tote bag, a, like a duffel bag in case I wasn't sure I was going to go to this. I definitely wanted to try. It was just a matter of my schedule, how things worked, blah, blah, blah. But I don't need it because I ended up buying a suitcase. And here's a trick if you go there. Um, I was talking to this nice lady that shops there, Tiffany, that was shopping there. And she mentioned that she had bought something heavy and they, everything's by weight. Um, and she said, nobody's going to spend that on this because it's super heavy, but it's not worth that. Um, and they ended up giving it to her for $15. So they weigh this and they tell me it's $20 and 76 cents, something like that. And I was like, Oh no, I don't want to spend that. I said, and so I start to take it away. And the other lady says, well, she might give you a deal or a deal. And I'm like, will you take 15 for it? And she said, yes. I mean, I didn't want to like lowball her. It's a vintage suitcase. It's really cool. I can use it. So inside it's got this like map print, which right there makes you think, oh, vintage. And the company is Boyt, B-O-Y-T, which I'm unfamiliar with. Um, on the outside it says Jump, J-U-M-P, like right there. Um, but I looked on eBay <clears throat> and there were quite a few solds at a pretty decent price, like hovering around $100. I don't think I want to, sh I want to ship this. So if it's $1.79 a pound and it was 20 something, so that's like at least 10 pounds. So it's, yeah, it's pro it's more than I could do on Poshmark. I don't know. I might try to, I don't know what I'm going to do. I may keep it. It has wheels and they work great because I didn't come back to the Airbnb after I went shopping. I went straight to work. So I had took it with me. It's got this. That's so nice. I think that's a deal for $15. It's just a matter of 
I honestly don't have suitcases. I borrow from my mom whenever I travel. Um, there was a uh, American Tourister uh, train case, which you know I love, and it had a matching suitcase. But uh, dealing with having to get that back as well, and then um, I felt like whoever buys the train case should buy the suitcase, and I would feel bad just buying the train case and not the suitcase. But obviously I couldn't because I'm traveling. If I was at home, I might have considered it, except with the weight, it probably wouldn't be worth it. Um, it wasn't like a really super special train case or very different from ones that I have. So I am being picky about my train cases, unless they're super cheap. Okay, so that is it. Um, it would I go back to that Vince location? If I came back to work here again, um, yeah, it was nice. Everybody was nice. You never know what you're gonna find. So it was a nice break for me. I'm here for like nine days and there's, I'm not doing anything for me. Like I get up, I'm not even doing my daily walking. Ugh. I, I think the area is slightly sketchy. I went for a walk one morning and this man, well, first there was a man who was talking to somebody who wasn't there. And then, and then, on the way back, there was a man on the other side of the street, and he stopped me to tell me I shouldn't be living in Cleveland, that it's a terrible place, and he can't find a job, and he has to stay to take care of somebody else's kid, because his stepfather did that for him, and it was just like out of the blue. I'm not even on the same side of the street as him. Just very bizarre. Um, but anyways, I, I'm just kind of not worrying about it, and I will be back on schedule, because I have no other trips planned when I get back. So... Thank you for joining me for this small haul from the city of Cleveland, and I will see you hopefully on my very next video. Bye now.